Welcome to the Fit Bucks Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a good episode today. It's something near and dear to my heart. And it's one of those things, and I'm sure many of you have been in this situation, right? Where I'll give you a perfect example. I was just out in Las Vegas and I, it's hot, right? 116, 120 degrees. Um, I was there for <clears throat> for work, but I, somebody wanted me to, to, to meet them down on the strip. So I met him down the strip. He's down there with he and his wife, and they are probably the cheapest people I've ever met in my life. Okay, and they we're walking down the strip. It's hot. It's, it's it's everybody's sweating. We duck into a little convenience store on the strip, and I'm like, I, I got Gatorade or something like that. And they literally started bickering about buying Gatorade or buying water because it was like a dollar fifty difference, right? And I just like sitting there like shaking my head. And the funny thing was is that neither one of them ended up actually buying anything because they just couldn't fathom spending money. You know, I've had another situation where I was at a couple's house and like the the, the wife came home and she was like, I was going to buy a, a, a Christmas star for the top of the tree. That was nine dollars. But, and you can just see the anxiety in her face. You get all stressed. Like, I didn't know if I should buy it. And, and, and I didn't want you to get mad. And, and, and do you think that we should get it? Like, and then their decision was, no, we don't get it. Because, you know, it's $9. And again, I, I'm sure you've been in those situations. You might even be that person that does that, okay? Um, but bottom line is, is today's podcast, today's video is about how not to feel guilty spending money. Okay, that's what we're going to be talking about. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'm going to be going through uh, some tools that we have at Fitbox to actually show that to you. And those on the podcast, I'm going to be verbalizing those numbers and how to actually do that and the theory behind all this stuff and, and whatnot. But that's the key how not to feel guilty spending money. And people are like, well, how do you know this stuff works? So on and so forth. That what the stuff that we're going to be talking about is like, because I do it. I, I, I spend money on pretty much, you know, whatever I want. The thing is about me is I, I just don't want that much stuff because I just don't feel that I need that much stuff. Like I've never really needed stuff. I don't like cars. I don't like TV. I don't like name, like name brand clothes. I don't feel the need to have it. So I just don't spend money just because I don't feel the need to. But like things like, hey, uh, should I get Gatorade instead of water? Yeah, I'm getting Gatorade. Or... You know, should I go out and eat dinner? Yeah, I'm gonna go out and eat dinner because I like eating dinner. Um, so I'm gonna show you how you can do the same thing. Now, before we get into that, first and foremost, like people talk about cheap and frugal. I do wanna talk about, about the difference between those. So frugal is okay. I mean, frugal, I guess you could say uh, I'm, I'm frugal. I'm just like, you know, what are you doing to, to not buy stuff that you don't need? Um, the difference that I see a lot with frugal people is oftentimes they forego stuff that they actually do need in the name of being frugal. And it's like, I have never bought something, not purchased something that I didn't need because I was just trying to be frugal. And so that is, if you're saying I'm frugal, that's one thing that I'd caution you against just making sure of is like, are you actually sacrificing things that you need? Okay. Um, so that's, that's a key difference there. Um, and on the other side of that is being cheap where I see people that they're just flat out cheap. I mean, I know like, for example, cutting coupons and using coupons, um, at stores is fine. Um, you know, that's part of being frugal, I guess, but being cheap is like someone that literally will sit there and spend like three hours cutting coupons to save 50 cents at, at the grocery store. I mean, it's like, that's, that's a waste. Like that's a waste of time. Like we talk about human capital all the time, right? You only have so much time to go do stuff, but what are you doing wasting cutting coupons for 50 cents? But, but the real thing about being cheap is those that try to haggle the shit out of everything because they want it at a cheaper value or they just don't think stuff are, is, is worth it. And, you know, I'll give you an example. It's like, I don't know if you guys have been around friends like this before where it's like they go and try to negotiate the price on everything, no matter what. It's like, you know, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to buy this coaching lesson. I'm going to buy 
these shoes. I'm going to buy this on that. I mean, I was at a, at a, a shoe store the other day and this guy that I know, I was there with him that, that's really cheap. He literally was trying to negotiate the price of the shoes and the, and the, the like the 16 year old that was working at the store was like, dude, like the price is on the sticker. Like I can't change that. And it's like, well, yes, you can. Like, it's, you know, and he's just being cheap, you know, or they, they substitute, they sacrifice their health for, for being cheap. Um, and so you definitely don't want to be cheap. You know, frugal's okay. Don't be cheap. And the main thing is, is don't, uh, you know, put your health at risk because you're trying to be too frugal, which I see oftentimes too. But like I said, I, I just want to quickly define those differences, cheap versus frugal. But I would, you know, the key piece to this video is how do you actually not feel guilty about spending money? Okay, how do you not be cheap? How do you not be frugal? How do you get what you need, but still save money and, and make sure that you're on a path towards uh, retirement? So if you're on YouTube, I'm going to switch over so that way you guys can see my screen. Again, if you're on the podcast, I am going to, um, I am going to verbalize this for you. So I'm going to sign into a Fitbucks account that we have. Um, and I'm going to go up here to our plan tool says build a new plan. Okay. So here's the, the scenario in this example I'm going to be given. This individual makes, uh, I want to say it's $78,000 a year. Yeah. $78,000 a year. They're graduate. They have about $150,000 in debt, just a real simple situation. All right. So I can illustrate this to you guys. Um, and that is that basically they just want to pay off their debt and start saving for retirement. And so you might be thinking like this person, Seventy-eight thousand dollars in debt, hundred fifty grand. I'm sorry, seventy-eight thousand dollars in income, hundred fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt. We always start off with step one, and that's our first formula. And again, making this stuff simple for you guys. Think of this stuff in two formulas. The first one is income minus expenses equals remaining cash. It's basically your budget, but it's not your traditional budget. Like if you go onto some of these other apps, uh, they'll have on there things like your debt payments and all this other stuff. All we're looking at is your day-to-day -day expenses, not like debt, not insurance, like payments, all that type of stuff. Just things like food, groceries, gas, clothing. If you have rent, water, utilities, whatever you want to put on that day-to-day -day expenses, that's what we, we put on this. Now, people that are like, quote unquote, cheap and frugal and, and a lot of budgeting apps, all they look at is that. And it's like, well... That's great. Like I, I, this is what I spent, but I, I have this much money now. What am I supposed to do with it there? And that, that's why people get freaked out is because they have this leftover money and they still don't know what to do with it. And actually that's the funny thing going back to like cheap and uh, cheap people. Again, why you don't want to be cheap. Most cheap people that I know, they save the money and they, they literally put it in a bank account and that's actually losing money because it's not even like keeping up with the cost of inflation. And so they don't even like, to save it to invest it and they actually end up in a worse situation than they would like if they weren't cheap so anyways i just wanted to add that in there but on this step you're basically just putting in your day-to-day -day expenses now it's important in this first step you're not caring about this bottom line number down here with remaining cash yet okay you're just setting this up actually to get to step two like what i'm saying is your day-to-day -day budget is important but it's not the most important thing when you're developing out a financial plan and trying to say, hey, how do I not feel guilty spending money? So to do that, let's go into step number two. Step number two is the key piece. And that's the second formula that we use at Fitbox. It's assets minus debt equals net worth. And so what we're saying is, is what percentage of my income is going to things like building assets, paying off debt, and then what we call risk management, which is like life insurance and disability insurance. Okay. So in this example, like I told you guys, this individual had 150 grand in debt. Let's just say that they want to put 30% of their income towards their student loans to pay that off. That's pretty aggressive. Okay, they'd probably be on pace to pay that off. Um, I would say in about probably in about eight years, seven to eight years. Okay, and then underneath financial assets, let's just say they're going to go out and, and their employer does like a 3% match, and so that's what they're going to do is a 3% match. And then the Roth IRA, they are three percent contribution to their four hundred one k, and then they want to also put some money to a Roth IRA. Okay, those of you that are looking on the screen, you can see that between like assets, debt, and risk management, they have about twenty four hundred dollars a month going to those those categories. Down here, you can say, okay, remember those on the podcast. I'll go through with these numbers. They made seventy eight thousand dollars 
a year or $6,500 per month. In step number one, for day-to-day -day expenses, they had $3,645 going to those, and then things going to like building assets, paying off debt, and insurances, they have about $2,405. Bottom line is, if you're listening to the podcast and, and can't visually see this, you don't need to memorize those numbers. What you need to know is even after they do this, so they, they pay taxes, they pay their day-to-day -day expenses, they put money towards assets, they put money towards debt, they pay for insurance. This individual would still have $1,240 a month left over, okay? So on that, they have vacation slash fund money. And that vacation slash fund money is the key, okay? So in this example, again, I have $1,240 left over. I have my financial plan built. 6% is going to my assets, 30% towards debt. Fantastic, right? At the same time, I have my day-to-day -day expenses taken care of. Vacation fund money, I have over $1,200 left over. Go do whatever you want to with that money. Now, if you're frugal and you want to say, hey, I'm cutting my expenses in step number one because I don't need that much money. I mean, I'm going to put more to debt and, and assets. So maybe you only have like $400 left over every month in vacation and fund money. That's fine. You no longer have to feel guilty about spending that money because you know the important part, your financial plan. The whole reason why you're being frugal and saving money is being taken care of. You no longer have to stress about it. Okay. Now, before you say, hey, this is the plan I want to follow so I don't have to stress about it, you, you got to do some projections to see where things are at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our tool again. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to skip some of these steps in our, in our financial planning tool and just go to the very end. Okay. Um, now, if, if you're watching on, on YouTube, ignore these first two columns because this is a demo pro profile we use for something different. So just ignore these right now. I'm just going to do this financial plan that I just built. Now, if I come all the way down here on the screen and I say, how fast would I pay off my loans? In this example, keep in mind, this person started off making $78,000 and had 150 grand in, in debt. They had their loans paid off by 2029, which that's about eight years from where we're at today. That's what I mentioned earlier. Now, if I fast forward, that's only eight years, but if I fast forward out to 10 years, this person would be debt free, have $39,000 and have $103,000 in the bank or in retirement, I'm sorry. And then if I kept doing this all the way out through to retirement, I'd have $503,000 basically in investments and about $1.7 million in my retirement account. So overall about $2.2 million when I go to retire. Now, that might be good for me. Some of you might be like, well, I want more than that, right? And that's what I, I said going back before is to say, hey, maybe you're a little bit more frugal. So you cut some of your day-to-day -day expenses so you have more money to go into those assets and debt. Or maybe you said, hey, look, like if you recall, I had $1,200 in vacation slash fund money I can spend after all my expenses. Maybe I don't need that much. Maybe I just need like $400 extra a month or $500 extra a month. So I put more in there. Let's actually go back and see what that looks like. So that maybe I say, look, I'm gonna be more frugal and actually put more money towards those items. So let's just say I decide I'm gonna do that right off the bat with my 401k and I'm gonna put you know, like 10% of my income in my 401k, and I'm gonna have about 6% going into a Roth IRA. So that leaves me with about $590 of vacation and fund money. And now, and by the way, I'm also assuming that my employer doesn't match anything on my retirement. This is just my money, not even including the match. So the little bit more of a frugal case, by the end of the 10th year, I'd have $194,000 in retirement and about $39,000 in cash and investments. By the time I hit retirement, I have about $2.5 million. Maybe that's good for you. The bottom line, when we stress how not to feel guilty about spending money, you wanna go through this exercise of saying, the way we break it down is step one is, is our first formula, income minus expenses. Use your day-to-day -day expenses, okay? Just to get a basic day-to-day -day budget. But the most important piece is the second formula. What percentage of my income is going to assets and debt because assets minus debt equals net wealth. And our goal is to build net wealth. Once you set up that plan, however you want to set it up, you can be frugal, you cannot be frugal. You can say, hey, I want 
to have 100 grand in 10 years. I want to have $2 million in retirement. Maybe you want more than that in 10 years, more than that in retirement, whatever it is. Once you do that second part of the formula and you do these out these projections, you say, that's the plan I want to do. You look at that vacation fund money. So let's just say it's $400, $500, $600, whatever it is that you have left over every month. You don't have to be guilty spending it anymore because you know I'm following my plan and I'm taking care of my day-to-day -day expenses. I don't have to sacrifice my health. I don't have to sacrifice anything else. Like I'm good as long as I follow what I set up. And that's the key that we always talk about, understanding, simple understanding of money, developing a plan and implementing it. And if you do that, when you go to build your plan and implement it, that vacation fund money that you have left over, spend it however you want to. You can develop a financial plan and not have to feel guilty about spending money. Again, step number one, incomeized expenses. It's your day-to-day -day expenses. Step number two, how much money is going to assets and debt. See where that would take you at in terms of projections. And then if you're good with where everything's at, that vacation money, go out and spend it. If you guys need help setting this up, as always, all you have to do is go to fitbucks.com, build your free profile and schedule a call with your FitBus coach if you need to and we can walk through this tool all day long and make sure that you know what you're doing and setting it up correctly and then go from there um, those calls are free so and so is your profile uh, so this tool that i showed on youtube today is free to set it up so if you guys have any questions let us know subscribe to the podcast subscribe to the youtube channel talk to you guys soon mm -hmm.